Hello guys, I'm Mighty Spotty Mum and welcome to the next video. Um, this one is another Inktober video and it's, well, it's one of my favourites that I did in the entire grouping and so I do hope you enjoy it too. The prompt word for this was, um, yeah, well, the prompt word was loop. So I did a Star Trek piece uh, from Next Generation and it was this, from the episode Cause and Effect and well Luke I went with that episode because it's kind of a Groundhog Day style theme and we had a bit of fun with it. I've got Riker and uh, Data in the picture that I'm drawing so I'm a bit of a sci-fi, I want it, I'm a lot of a Trekkie fan. Um, if you ever do to get over onto my Instagram, you'll see that a lot of my art has kind of got this geeky vibe to it. It's, it's what I love. So, I hope you enjoy watching this come to life. It's been already showed over on, shown over on my Instagram, the art complete, as it is completed. But sometimes it's a bit of fun just seeing these pieces of work as they're drawn and as I was doing so. So this was filmed, I filmed it as I was creating it. So I'll see you on the flip side and I'll talk to you a bit of the process. Right, so as you can see, the line work's already been put down. So I've already got worked out where I'm wanting the core, that ball and been that core bit I've done. Now, if you want me to actually go through how I how I get the core, sort out my original uh, charcoal pencil line work again, let me know. And I will do another video with that on. Uh, sometimes it's raw sketching. Sometimes I do uh, the trace style sketching. I've shown you both ways before and I'm quite happy to do another video with it. And it's just, it really does prolong the video doing it doing it every time this again it, I'm using smooth paper on this and sometimes generally now now though I've gone over to bristle board it's a bit thick bristol bristle board bristol board it's a lot thicker and it works really well for my work with markers uh, so when you doing this kind of work having the right tool wrong right tool right paper for the job it makes it so much easier and markers blend a lot quicker now you can see i'm using a combination here of working with markers and my pens so that's because i'm actually do blocking off all large areas as i'm drawing so it makes it a lot easier to actually go through and block off those larger black areas with a bigger pen it just saves a lot of time and like Beta's hair, he's got a big area that's actually going to get blocked off like that. So it's just all about body. <laughs> my life a little bit easier. Now this was a very ambitious piece for me. I learned to, I learned a lot over in Turbo and my work improved throughout it. But this piece was one of the more ambitious ones because it's a full page piece. And the one thing you've got to remember about Inktober is you're producing work every single day for that month. And for somebody with a full chronic illness that causes a lot of pain throughout all your joints, it's particularly hard. My hands are still paying for it and we're a few days on. I'm still wearing my arthritis gloves to try and mitigate that pain and taking some time just to recover but this as i said was recorded drawing so yeah, i'm going to be able to get some videos out i'm hoping to get one out over the weekend for you guys too which will i'm hoping to be able to draw for the next couple of days for guy Fawkes day um which will be really nice um because it's one of my favorite holidays so and i'm a big kid <laughs> i've always loved the fireworks if i even if i don't like the sound of them uh, I do like the I do like the colours. So anyway, here we go again. That look at, for the, again, I'm blocking out using the markers to block out a large section of black. Don't 
don't feel like you have to do all the ink work with your pens. You can use markers like this and it makes blending a lot easier later on because markers blend with each other. So, but they're not going to blend with things like your Tombow pen. So bear that in mind. Um, now, uh, Tombow, yet yeah, again, as I've just mentioned, that is the black pen I'm using right now. It's really versatile for line work. It's really great with your thin, thin lines, but you can also put a bit more pressure on and it'll do a lot wider lines for you. So I am actually going to let you watch a bit of this because otherwise it's a two hour video I filmed here and you don't want to listen to two hours of me rambling. So I'll let you watch a bit of the filling in the line works. I did do a lot of blockier line work on this piece. It's more in that style. You'll see as it goes along. And I'll come back and talk to you a little bit later on when I see a few other styles change. All right, guys. All right, as you can see, I'm starting with colours a lot sooner than I normally would. It's because I'm taking this piece as like two separate pieces of work. So I, t I took the challenge of Riker and the challenge of Data and the background all as separate little pieces. But I wanted to talk, talk to you before about the lighting and the dark shading parts. So you can see here, I've got one of the lighter colors and I'm when I move my hand, <laughs> um, I'm purposely going around and using that light purple to just put on some light highlights. I've already got the darker highlights I put on with the black and then I've got this darker shade that I'm using. And then purple isn't actually the color of your skin, you'll also know. And that's okay, the lighting's making it that colour. These colours appear in our skin tones. And then I'm using another colour of the top. These markers are amazing. You can put layer colours on top of colours and they will mix. They will blend with each other and they will make these amazing tones. And as I said, you can use purples, you can use reds on skin tones like this. And it's how lighting affects our skin. You, will, If you look closely at pictures, you will see that these colors all exist, especially in different environments. And you just need to look deeper. And these colors are so important when building up facial features. And when you're doing something like this, you need to look for the highlights. You need to look for the dark points and you need to look for the shapes, the curves of the face. So you can see here, I've got the curves of his face. I've got how, how it got so much darker at the top and then as we go around the chin it's a little bit it's getting a light a little bit lighter but it's still the depth under his nose I've highlighted how dark it gets with yet again purple tones and then again we're going to put a bit more depth on the chin I think and it's all done in these purple purple tones and that just adds to how you're coloring and it gives more character to somebody rather than just using your peaches for skin colors or your browns if you're doing uh someone that's black and it, if, if you're doing someone's black you've always got to remember to do the highlights on the skin as well because they they just really make someone come to life it's like you see down the back of his suit here that that bit that's left that's because that's left to show highlights where the light would bounce off and if I didn't leave that, it wouldn't look right. So, and greys can be used as, as I'm using here for some of it, because greys, it's not always, or not often the perfect white that pops off. So often it's shades of grey, light grey. The perfect white is so rarely the color we're looking for. So there's a little bit more as i said there's blue coming into his hair and data was one of the more interesting ones i've drawn because the lighting in that room we've got so many different colors that came into his face that and came into his hair and everything you'll see as i keep adding that weren't what you would see as your traditional colors yet it all formed his features and i was really proud of how he turned up in the end so i'm going to let you watch the rest of it but it does show you a lot of how blending works. All 
Right, so you see how when you see how now how where the face actually looks alive real. That's because all the different colours were used. If I just stuck to what we see as the traditional skin colours, that lifelike features and colours wouldn't be there. But because there's violets at the top, top left of his face, and we've got some well, quite bright pinks and purples and and dark blues that would be there in the setting. And we're going to use some blues within his hair now and some greys to do some highlights. And it brings life to people by using some of the colours that you would see more as off colours when for facial tones. But when they actually are the colours that fit the situation that person's in, that makes it the right colours to be picking. So it's always worth taking all that into account, especially when you're blending and high and working with these pens. Because I said these pens, you can see they blend with each other perfectly. You just got to remember to not just put one layer of them on. You can see I keep going back over and over, just because they work better and you put them up put at least two three layers of them on because that allows them to do what they're built to do. So I'll be going from here to do a bit of work on Riker next. Um, who's studying his very traditional clothes. Um, very much well known because of his back problems, but it's become very well known as the Riker pose. And um, you'll see very similar work done with him, although I don't believe he has as many other highlights. But yeah, again, things I've done to show off his facial features. So let's go on to do that. I'll let the video play on a bit more. Right, you'll see here I've gone to a lot of trouble to dark it, block, block out a lot of marks and shadowed areas. Because in this scene, they actually are quite heavily in shadow because of what was going on in the episode. There's a lot of problems going on, but I'm going to let you go watch the episode if you want to find out what that's going on. As I said, it's a Groundhog Day style episode. But by marking it out and by me wanting to highlight the depths of the episode, it kind of is to highlight the situation they're in, the depths of the issues. And that kind of, that can help. But... It also helps bring depth to your clothing, bring depth to everything else you're doing. And it, by marking out your shadows and your little areas before, it makes your clothing, like I've done on the face, it makes your clothing look real and, and natural as clothing normally flows. Fl clothing, you can see I'm sat, it's got natural creases. It doesn't just sit there flat to the body like if you were drawing a t-shirt. It doesn't. We all have natural creases in our clothing as we sit because it moves with us. So if I was sat straight upright, my clothing wouldn't have creases like this. So you want to make sure they flow naturally and fit the character's posture how they and how they move. And you also want to take into account where the light's coming from and the shadow that make sure the shadows fit that now this is actually a very famous image so obviously i had a lot more to reference from it made it a lot easier i could i know you knew where the lighting was from if you're drawing your own image keep all that in mind and go from there i'm gonna yeah let you go forward i'm not gonna describe how doing a face again because i've already done the face with Riker, uh, with Riker with data so yeah, let's go watch a bit more.
Right, so we've got all the uniforms. You can see I've added deep, deeper reds and things on as well. But now we're onto the hands, and they can be one of the most tricky things to do. But if you're using a reference image, trust yourself to pick out the things. You're not going to get exact. No one's ever going to get exact. That's not what you're aiming for. You're aiming for your style, your method, your interpretation. Don't try to be perfect. For goodness sake, that's, that was my worst mistakes when I started learning. Do it your way. But look for the colours again. Isolate an area and go, what colours are there? And trust yourself if you see purple. I know it seems weird, but if you see purple, draw purple. And his hands here, that is what was reflecting on them. Purple can reflect on hands. If you've got there's a light on in the area, then the hand may be lit up purple. And I know that can be really strange. And we just think we're drawing a hand. We must draw it in peaches and we must draw it black or we must draw it it's not always the way it goes sometimes the environment we're in affects the colors of our skin because what if we're in a disco what if there's fireworks on in the background so it's okay look closer look at your reference images look at your pictures and draw isolate little bits at a time if you've got an ipad zoom in just to that point and see what you see in that little little point and don't focus on anything else and just draw that and just practice looking really close and you will be amazed at the colours you see it's what helped me progress a lot further was stopping focusing at the whole picture and focusing just on the points I was doing now as I said hands hands are one of the trickiest things they are they took me the longest out of everything i think to learn how to draw um but in the end i think it was stopping trying to be so perfect with them and just accepting mistakes will happen and yeah but again and now i did now i just trust the markers and trust what my eyes see and go from there this particular one there were so many different colours reflecting the, uh, the lights from the scene were all reflecting onto his hand here and he was it was also affected by the shadows around him and therefore it made it such an interesting look but it didn't look like you would expect it to look but as soon as it was there on the picture it all fit which is what's important so I'm going to then let you see the other hand drawn and talk to you a little bit about once you've got a picture like this, how to make the background fit. So I'll let you, yeah, talk to you in a few minutes. So for the background image of a piece like this, now you might find the background image is a little bit darker than you want it to be on your original image, that's fine, you can always lighten it up and if you want it to still include it, you want to find something that's going to fit. So I've chosen slightly lighter greys than they were in the original image because you want those main characters to pop, that's what I was drawing and that's fine that's allowed so yeah the background image it's more about creating ambience creating the scene behind them making it fit enough to make it okay and it's simple so that's what you're allowed to do don't over complicate a background scene if you're doing an image like this it doesn't have to be perfect it's a, it, it, it's literally dressing and the the image the picture it's all about those two so remember that if you die if i darkened the entire scene as much as it would have been around those two it would have completely drowned them out and made them disappear and that's not what you want to, to do because we need to see them because well that's 
what you draw an image for about those two. You draw it for and about them. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to really say about the background image because the rest of it is simply just blocking in colour and it is pretty much all it's about is blocking in here. And, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed me talking to you. I just come in at the end and say bye, but I hope you enjoyed the little bits of information I've had to give you. And... I'll see you over fireworks if I manage to get my hands good enough to produce something. To intellectual force, they're always a few that come in and think that they have a great deal of wisdom. Great deal of wisdom that they can somehow give away poor, struggling people here. People here, polarized as we are in the lower end of the socioeconomic income picture, and they think that uh, they can reach down to our, reach down to our, grab existence and lift us up. Hey guys, I forgot to mention I forgot to mention the white my white gel pen and coming in with that and how important it is. This adds that kind of um, je ne sais quoi to pieces like this. That final little piece, the highlights in um, David's hair, the little bits of glimmer of light on ends of noses. The, it just adds that little final bit. I also apologise that I knocked the camera and what we got in a little bit too close here. Um, I am sorry for that. This is a new way of learning to film for me. I have actually got a new table coming that will go over my chair, uh, which will help me, but I'm restricted with how I can film because of my disability. But once that does come, we should be a lot more stable with the filming. Um, but yeah, this, this, this just adds those little final little bits and brings the piece together. So if you are doing pieces like that, just remember that that's there. It's been really fun sharing this with you today, guys, and I hope you've enjoyed being here too. Um, I'm going to put a video of, the, I'll get my husband to put a video of the final piece at the end of this, uh, since we zoomed in so far. Stay safe and well, and if you did like this video, please do like, ring that notifi notification bell, and do subscribe as well. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>